So in the in the beginning, I, I, I asked, can financial frictions explain large TP differences and GDP differences? Um, and under what circumstances? In particular, can you explain high um, capital misallocation on the intensive margin? And the, the answer is that yes, if ability shocks are, so I haven't really shown that very well, but I'm pretty sure it works out. So yes, if ability shocks are frequent enough, and also that convergence, so like saving up out of these foreign constraints is fast enough, uh, is slow enough, sorry. So there are these two counteracting forces, right? You're being hit by shocks, but at the same time you you, you kind of save yourself out of the out of the boring constraints. Um, what we don't think is an important issue is these dynastic management issues, um, where where the child is a dummy and the parent is smart and therefore the the capital misallocated. Um, that's because, as I said before, lifetimes are just too long um, for that to matter because people. People tend to say, like, if, if I know that I'm, I'm very smart and the capital market doesn't give me the money, I'll just save it up myself. Um, so if, if these shocks are frequent and convergence is slow, then you get this persistent misallocation. But what if we have a world where there may be 100 families that control basically all the wealth and all the industry, and everyone else is too poor, basically, to that can get up to like big businesses. I mean, it seems like you have very, if 100 families, 25 of them have. So you're talking about a world where you have fixed costs or something. Yeah. And you need to. Yeah, right. So this is what we said earlier. This is, then you get some extensive margin misallocation. So you're going to get, yeah, you might get pretty big uh, GDP effects and TFP effects, but it's going to be in contrast to the data where you actually have a lot of um, uh, differences right. in marginal products across guys. And that's kind of what we're shooting for. Okay. And you can't get that out of the model where you just have that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also want to look at the wealth distribution, which is the graphs I showed you earlier. All right, well, thanks very much. Um, questions? Sorry? The graph you showed for the human that suggested the model that the people use for interest rate For in finance. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Sorry? That might be a more flexible. Do you also look at the distribution though? Yeah. yeah? Like the you look you use this like chromograph for yeah. equation? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Okay, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, it, it's like it comes up in a lot of things and it seems like the natural way of uh, of modeling stuff. Yeah. Wouldn't microcredit seem to be the solution for this? this yeah. Project? So, so I I'm, I was talking in a very abstract sense. So, what, like the credit market and perfection here is just like the lambda, right? Yeah. Which is um, high in some countries and low in some. Yeah. The argument is that lambda is sort of a. If you it, it brings uh, increases the lambda basically. So if, if the microcredit increases the lambda. So. If I if I model this in a more satisfactory way, um, where you basically have, I mean, the way that microcredit works, I guess, is right that you give a loan to a group and then they all like enforce repayment. Um, so it, it basically decreases the probability of default. And here I said that lambda is, is sort of reflects the probability of default because that reflects how much collateral you have to put up. So that's exactly the same. Yeah. They're also yeah very small loans. I mean, if you have these fixed costs that are, that are above the size of the earth. Yeah, so I, that, that's right. So, yeah, so that, that's that's a good point. So fixed costs, you might not, you might not be able to overcome fixed costs. So there, there again, these two sort of misallocations. One is intensive margin, and one is extensive margin. So intensive margin being companies have the wrong scale. So they would like to expand. So they are already in business, and they would like to expand. The other one is that you're not even in business at all. And it's not quite clear which one's the bigger issue. Um, over, so you might think that, yeah, the fixed costs are the bigger issue. Um, I'm not so sure about that because you particularly, you, you see a lot of the, um, you, you see a lot of this, you see a lot of these really small businesses, they're actually operating, um, and they, they just like, 
only operating half the day, they're only, I don't know, do, like just doing stuff on a very small scale. And it seems like they, they are in business, but they somehow can't expand. So that's kind of where microcredit comes in, and that I think is not in terms of just getting businesses started, but also getting the people who are already in business, like getting them to expand. I don't know how small these loans are um, relative to to uh, to like what the typical fixed cost is, and, uh, the cost of the machine is. I don't know, probably not so. You're probably you're right. That's right. So. Parameterizing ability is being a, a multiplier of the first production function. That, that's also how you parameterize like uh, efficiency technologies and things like that too, right? So you can say that, that that's another part of it. Because I mean, those things are in some sense connected, although you would expect to be using the amount of time increasing or something in this technology because the cost just like works. Yeah, yeah, no, you can put in the trend here. Yeah, yeah I assume that's a piece, these are different. We'll go around these again. Um, no, yeah, I mean, this is all very abstract, which in a way is bad because it's abstract, but in a way it's good because you can just reinterpret it like, very easily. So um, this is exactly um, what you're saying. They're all, like, mathematically, this is all according to that. But, yeah. What do you think about it as innate ability to a guy, or you think about it as, like, the, the level of technology that he has in his firm? Uh, it's kind of all the same. 